I want to talk about Meta's SAM2 model, the segment anything model for video and images. They had previously released SAM1, I guess you would call it now that those are two. And what it is is a computer vision model. It's finding pixels within a frame, being able to highlight that and keep it in focus. But now with SAM2, the prompting, the ability to find the right pixels within a frame, I mean, look at that with such fidelity and accuracy is incredible. And one of my favorite areas is computer vision because it's literally visual and there's such really cool applications. And I'll go towards a couple little projects that I've worked on, but you can see one at the outset is the ability to highlight something within a video and then edit it for content creation. Before you would have to do very meticulous tracing, setting keyframes, finding that and going frame by frame. Whereas now we have something, if you know a little Python and you can set this up and you can have the GPU power to run inference of the model on the video, you can now create things like this. But there's other applications. What I find incredibly fascinating is the ability to highlight something under a microscope, as you see here, or object detection within videos. That is something that is very hard. That takes a lot of hyperparameter tuning, a lot of data science in the upfront, finding the right amount of data to be able to find the pixels within a singular frame to be properly identified. And if you can get with, you know, increase the precision and the accuracy as the segment anything model has done, then you're able to create things instead of having to worry about the training. And that reduces the time to deployment and gets to much better use cases much faster. So open source, it's right here on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description. If you know a little Python, if you know a little computer vision, you can go through here, go through the readme files, install it, then you are off and running and you can go ahead and create some fascinating projects. Sam2, here's another article talking about the different use cases, video editing, mixed reality experiences, scientific research, as we just saw. And I'll put this too, to, to walk through again, how it's actually used. So how have I used it? Well, let's go first, what like a plant classification computer vision model traditionally looked like from what I created. Now I used a data set, I was able to see okay, what is within the data set? And the whole purpose of this was some sort of classification model to look at different images from a test set and appropriately classify them. And to do that, you got to do all this different manipulation of the imagery, color adjustment, decode the image. And this is what Sam is actually doing, but there's a lot of manual steps in order to do that, a lot of training. And then here looking at the confusion matrix, making sure things, again, you still would do a lot of this stuff, However, there's less steps. Because if we go over here in a project that I worked on, which is just me and my fiance playing tennis, all I wanted to do was do some object detection within the video. And if you saw over previously, here they have like a simple click that they're doing within this image. Uh, let's see if they show it again. Yeah, here, click, click. But here, literally have to put the actual location within the frame and yeah, it's somewhat as simple as a click click. I just have to manually put it within the Python code and then by frame by frame doing a little fine tuning, then you're going to get an output that looks like this. So here's the original video and then here's the video with object detection finding with pixels. Now there's going to be a frame skip right there. You can briefly see it. I would have to go back there and fine tune it, but look with just such accuracy, the ability to identify something within a video. And you can he see here without the actual imagery behind it, what the silhouette looks like. This is incredible. It took a bit of, you know, learning <laughs> on my part. However, this is the Python code. Now I'll put a link to my GitHub if you want to do something similar. And I just want to share just, it's incredible. What, what I could do is take my plant classification project that I worked on previously, use this model instead of having to manually mess with the RGB, the different parameters, being able to isolate the image and cut out the background noise, put this in place and see an increase. But 
you get it, you think of so many applications. You don't have to necessarily use smart cameras anymore. You could put this in place as long as you have tied to the power necessary to do inference actively to identify threat detection, potential safety hazards, or if you're doing sort any sort of identification and it'll increase the accuracy. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing these companies continually release and open source models and they're getting smarter, they're getting better, they're getting easier to deploy. And I find it fascinating. Hey, kudos to you, Meta. I personally am not a user of Facebook. I do use Instagram, but the stuff you're doing outside with your research and you can actually go on their website and see how they train the model, what it consists of. And everything has like a model card, has the bias, the ethics behind it, all the methodology that they ran into. and. What I mentioned earlier about the fact that they are putting an open source, you got to look at how much training is required. So if I do a quick search, because I know, because I was reading through this, they used 256 A100 GPUs trained for 108 hours. This corresponds to 12,165 kilowatt hours of power, an, an estimation of emissions of 3.9 metric tons of CO2. This is equivalent to 10,000 miles driven by the average gasoline powered passenger. I mean, 12,165 kilowatt hours equated to those A100 GPUs. And you got to know, most of the energy that is input into a GPU is expended. It's about 90, 98 to 99% as heat. So a lot of ex other energy has to cool everything, power fans, power liquid cooling. Don't know what their data center looks like. But then... They train the model and they put it out there. And if you go and look at how the Llama 3.1 model that was just released was trained, it is exponentially larger, took way more energy. And again, they put that out there. And I've personally been able to use that for different projects as well. So kudos to you, Meta. Let's just keep innovating, keep releasing, and let's keep having fun.